Today's video is about beginner instructions on taking care of Venus flytraps. You probably already know how to take care of yours, and if you do, it might just help to look at a fresh face, say it again. But if it is your first time taking care of a Venus flytrap, I've got some instructions for you. Very important. Come along. Rule number one is the water. Venus flytraps can only have distilled water. If you give them tap water, you're going to kill them. Pretty sure you don't want to kill your little babies. Distilled water and reverse osmosis water, also referred to as RO water, or even rainwater. I used to take rainwater for my plants. Now you can grow them in 100% sphagnum peat moss, or even 100% long fiber dead sphagnum, which is just sphagnum peat moss before it's had years of partying to turn it into peat. But I like to add sandy love into my mixes. I'm talking 20 mesh silica sand, or super nice aquarium sand. Supernatural. You can see the grain right there. It's not too tiny. You don't want sand that's too fine because then it'll act more like clay. And what I mean by that is water won't drain through the soil as quickly as it would with larger grains like this. If you don't want to use sand, you can also use perlite. I've got my opinions about perlite though, and I've made a video about that. The video's title is Sand is Good for Your Plants, or Sand Does Good for Your Venus Flytrap, something like that. But yeah, my preferred method is sand because that's how it is in nature. But in a crunch, you could use perlite. It's just not as pretty. The sand and perlite in your peat allows your plant's roots to breathe. Venus Flytraps like a lot of water, but they also like to breathe, which can sound contradictory, but I don't ask questions. Now with watering, you might come up with your own method and your own routines. For me, I personally like to flood the H out of my plants and let the water gradually diminish over time so that they can experience the extremes. They can experience flooding and then somewhat of a little tiny drought. I've found, and a lot of other growers have found, that if you allow your plants to experience a little bit of dryness, it promotes very strong roots. I used to grow my plants in these really big McDonald's styrofoam cups. And when I practiced letting them dry out a little bit, I learned that it stimulated their roots. And at the bottom of this really tall cup, I'd find all of these healthy, thick roots hanging out. When people think that Venus flytraps don't have very strong roots, that's not the case. It depends on the water level. Very tiny roots for a very high consistent water level. Very long strong roots for a water level that fluctuates or that is very low. The last thing Venus flytraps need is a lot of light. Now I've mentioned before in another video that there will definitely be nurseries or even stores online sometimes that will give you incorrect instructions. And by incorrect instructions I mean they'll tell you that these plants are partial sun plants. No, 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 no. These plants want full sun. Almost like a succulent or a cactus. I'm telling you, you you won't see the beauty that your plants can be unless you find a spot for them that can give them at least six hours of full direct sun a day. But of course I grow mine indoors so I'm dealing with a different setup. I figured out how to give them their sun needs using LED shop lights. Note, I do not use grow lights. These are not plant grow lights. I also have a video for that one and by that one I mean that tip on my lighting. Sphagnum moss. Now you know how to grow really strong Venus flytraps. It's so simple that that's how people kill them. These plants have really simple needs but you just check the boxes and before you know it they're just glowing. All right. Mm-hmm.